Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. In this PowerShell quick tip video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can actually see what software is installed on your own computer or a remote computer. This code will work for both. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So there's actually a few ways to check if a software is installed. The way that we're going to be doing our whole code by the end is we're going to be using the two different methods. So the first method that I'm going to show here is does work. It will give you some software and the other way will work and give you some software. What I've noticed is sometimes one will work better than the other at detecting certain pieces of software. That's why I usually combine the two in a script. So let's go ahead and let's just see the first one here. The first one is get WMI object class win 32 product. And then usually what I will specify is computer name. So this way you can get a remote computer or your own computer. So let's do it on this remote computer here. If I go ahead and we run this, and we're just going to pipe this right off to a select uh, name comma vendor here just to actually I'm going to do a version here. So name and version because um, I find the version is a little bit more helpful than the vendor sometimes. So here we actually have two pieces of software, which is PowerShell Universal, which is at version 4.2.9. And we have PowerShell 7, which is at version 7.4.1.0. That's perfect. That's nice and dandy. And we can even do it for um, my own computer here. If we just did env uh, computer name, I do not remember what my computer name is. If we do this here, we're going to see that this one will have a lot more. And it does take a little bit of time with the w get, uh, WMI object. I still like running both because it will catch some things. And we're going to see with the JP hype V, that's the machine that we're going to be really using this on. You're going to notice the differences in software that it detects. So here's all the software installed on this computer here. So we can see that there are, there is a whole bunch here. Um, but let's just keep this to JP hype, uh, hype B 2022, cause that will give us just a shorter amount and just easier to read. All right. So then the other method that we really want to look at at this point is actually through the registry. Now there are a couple ways to do this through the registry, but remotely without having to do an invoke command and get really, really ugly with getting some different results back. What we actually like to do is just use the remote registry. So it does involve needing the remote registry service working uh, just as a, a little bit of a heads up here. So if we want to know what is installed here, what we're going to want to do is just do the installed uh, software key uh, path here. And we're going to want to make this as software um, backslash backslash Microsoft backslash backslash Windows backslash backslash current version backslash backslash uninstall. Now what this is, this is going to be the registry path that's going to show us all the software that we can actually uninstall, therefore giving us all the software that is actually installed. So what we can do here is we can do installed software. So we're going to create another variable here. And we're going to make that equal to a set of square brackets. And we're going to make Microsoft dot win 32 dot registry key. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to open remote base key. And then we're going to do local machine because we want to do the local machine registry. And local machine doesn't mean locally to this computer. Local machine will be the HKLM. Similar to when you open up the registry, you will have the HKLM, HKCU. So we're looking for anything that's installed on the local machine. So 
Again, this won't catch things that are installed for users specifically, just out of, as a little heads up here. So we're going to do JP hype V 2022. And we're going to close the parentheses here. And then what we're going to do is we are then going to want to go into the software. So we're going to go and look at software registry keys. And we are going to make that equal to installed software dot open sub key. And we are going to go and we are going to open the installed software key path. All right. So if we go ahead and we just run these three here and we look at what is inside these software registry keys, we're going to see that it looks pretty empty right now. And that is okay because we can see a lot more in just one second. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to do software registry keys dot get sub key names. And if we just run this real quick, we're going to see that we get some results back. These are all the different things that we pull back from that path, which is exactly what we want. So what we actually want to do here is we're going to store this into a variable and we're going to store this as sub keys. Now you can do uh, like software sub keys. This way it's a little bit more descriptive. And then what we're going to want to do is for each key in software sub keys, we're going to open and close the curly bracket. And then we're going to say that we want to say that current software is equal to installed software key path. And what I like to do is just wrap this in double quotes here. And then we're going to do backslash backslash key. And then end the double quote. That should be good. And then we are going to say current software sub key is going to be equal to uh, installed software dot open sub key. And that is going to be the current software. And that should be good here. So if we go and we run this real quick. And let's see what we now have. So in this current software sub key, we're again just going to see not anything super useful. But what's interesting here is if we go current software sub key dot get value names now, we are going to see that we get a bunch of different items. We get display name, display version, the publisher, the install date, the estimated size. So we can get a lot of different values for these softwares that are installed. So what we actually want to do is just do a, we're going to create a new object here. So we're going to do entry equals new object. And I like to do PS, uh, P, uh, the new object type name is going to be PS custom object. And then we're going to do a add member input object is going to be entry. And then the member type is going to be the note property name. We're going to store the computer name because this is going to maybe run on multiple computers. We want to make sure that we actually store the computer name here. In our case, for now, we're just going to put a hard coded 
type B 2022 add member. So we're just going to copy this here and we're going to paste that in twice. And now we're going to put name and we're going to put version here. And then in the value for name, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put that as uh, we're just going to want to say it is going to be the current software sub key dot get value. Now here you're going to pass in one of those value names here. So we're going to do display name. And I'm just going to show you guys what this is. Once we actually run this, we're just going to have to put this in double quotes or single quotes completely up to you. But if we actually run this specific piece of code here, we're going to hit Microsoft Visual Studio Code. So that's perfect. And then we're just going to do the same thing at the bottom. But instead of display name, we're going to pull back display version here. And then all we're going to do is we're going to do a list plus equals entry. All we're going to do here is create a, a list at the top here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to select all of this, run that. And let's go and see what's in our list here. So here you're going to see a bunch of things that are empty. Uh, because the registry doesn't have the information for it. Uh, so that is, again, another limitation of the differences with uh, PowerShell, of course. Now, of course, you can go into the registry and go in and see if there's some other values that you might want to pull back um, and different things like that. But as you can see, we do have our PowerShell 7 in our Microsoft Visual Studio code but we don't have our PowerShell Universal that came with the WMI object. That's why we like doing both. So what we can do here is now that we have really the code for both, what I like to do is I like to bring this list to the top here. And I want to create another variable called computers. And here you're going to put your list of computers that you want to check. So in our case, we're going to put JP v 2022 and we're going to do a for each computer in computers and we're going to do open and close curly bracket and we are going to start with the wmi object commandlet here and we are going to say wmi software is equal to the get wmi object select name and version and what we like to do here is then for each software in WMI software, open and close curly brackets. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy paste this entry and all the different ad members. And then all we need to do is just change the value here. So we're going to also change the computer name. We're going to change that to computer. And then the name here, we're going to change that to software.name. And we're going to change the version to software.version. And we know this because we do the select right here. So we know exactly what the values are going to be there. So actually, if we just show exactly what this shows right now, if we just run our our new output here. And of course, we need to change this to be computer here. So if we go ahead and we run this, we just make this a little bit bigger. We're going to see that we get our two pieces of software. So we can see the computer name and we can also see our PowerShell Universal and our PowerShell 7, which is fantastic. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to actually pull all this code that we wrote earlier for the registry. We're also going to put that in here. We're just going to make sure that we tab enter it nicely. And then the only thing that we need to do is change that JP height B that we had hard coded, change that to computer. 
And then once again, the computer name, we're going to change that to computer as well. And now if we go and we run this whole piece of code again, we're going to see that we do get a lot of duplicates, of course. Now we know that we're going to get duplicates purely because we know that it gets pulled from the WMI object, but it also gets pulled from the, um, the registry. Now what we want to actually do is simplify that and get that unique value. And we're going to get rid of all of these empty ones as well, because as you can see, we still have some empty values here. So we're going to want to get rid of those. So what we're going to do is at the bottom here, we're just going to say list, type that to where, and we're going to do where, dollar sign underscore name. So if we actually just go ahead and we run this right off the bat here, and where, oh, we probably just put name. So where name, that will instantly get rid of all the empty ones because that will get rid, it's basically where name exists. So if the name is blank, it's going to get rid of it. And then what we can actually even do is then pipe that to a select dash unique computer name, name, version. And if we go ahead and we look at that here, it gets rid of the extra PowerShell 7. And now what we can actually do is if we add a computer here, again, I just don't know what this computer name is by heart. If we go ahead and we add that in here and we go ahead and we run this, now this will do the two computers. And again, you can add as many computers as you want. Just be aware, again, the WMI object one does take a little bit of time to run. Um, so this could be something that can take a lot of time, depending on how many machines you have. Uh, but here it is. Here is the actual result here. So we can see what computer that software is on and we can see that the three pieces of software that is on the JP Hype B 2022 is right there. So that is a very easy way to get the list of installed softwares. Now, again, you can definitely add a lot more to this script. You can add the install date and pull back a bunch of different details as well. Um, you can get a bunch of different information from the registry. You can also get a bunch of different information from the get WMI object as well, which is kind of nice. Um, so definitely play around with this and you can definitely get a nice script working to pull back the list of software that's installed. Now, again, like I said, it might not pull back all the different software, especially the software that's installed specifically as a user you might not pull that back depending on how it's installed. So just be aware, you might still have to hop on that computer to see everything that's installed, but this should give you a very, very good picture. If you guys have anything that you guys would like me to look at in these quick tip videos, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to make every single one. And as long as it can benefit the community, I will definitely make the video. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.